Hey guys, Chidi here. Welcome back. So uh, there's a lot of going on right now. Well, at the time of this video, a lot of conversation about the prosperity, what people call the prosperity gospel. So we are going to look at the blessing of Abraham, right? That's that's where we're trying to go. Uh, that's the conversation we're going to have today. What is the blessing of Abraham, right? It's very common growing up in the Pentecostal or Pentecostal churches or what we, you know, what people hear today a lot um, that, you know, the blessing of Abraham people, a lot of people associate that with, with, with wealth, right? Abraham was successful, man, in terms of, you know, accumulation of wealth, you know, had a lot of servants, a lot of things worked out for him. And people associate that, oh no, the God of Abraham, you know, is your God. People believe if Abraham was successful, then you should, you ought to be successful, right? If Abraham, you know, he went to war and won the battle, all that, you should prosper and all that. But people don't say, you know, since Abraham was, took him almost 100 years to, before he could have a child, then maybe you should wait, not have a baby until 100 years. We only associate some of the things that worked out for him. But to leave that, let's just go in straight to what is the blessing of Abraham? Before we tackle that, um, there's a law of first principle. I guess the first principle rule that you take something to its lowest state, right? In order to, you know, if you, you take something, right? You take something and break it down, right? Before you can assemble. So we're going to try to do that. How the Bible that we use, right? The Bible that people use where we got this concept of blessing of Abraham. What is it? Like what, how did Jesus interpret the Bible? When the Bible say the blessing of Abraham, does that mean something else? Right? So, and to me, I, not only to me, this, I believe, is the most fundamental thing. If you don't understand that the Bible, the scripture points to Christ, you are likely to use it to explain something else or to mean something else. If you don't understand that scripture points to Christ. Someone can quote out of the scripture. Like just like when the devil trying to tempt Jesus and he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. You know, you should, you know, you, you God will give his angels charge over you. Jump down. So quoting the scripture is not enough. What is the context? What was the pretext? But that statement, what was the use of it, right? If we don't know this, we might end up struggling a lot or, or taking advice or, or, you know, leading direction from even people that you respect. If you don't understand this, the scripture points to Christ. Jesus said in the book of um, John 6, he told the people, you guys are searching the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but they are testimony of me, right? If you don't understand, so if you go to the book of Hebrews, I'm going to pull it up real quick. The, in, in the past, God spoke to our fathers at different times, right? So different generation, right? Abraham, Noah, different people, right? Moses, and, and in various ways. So one thing was consistent, God's, God's word or God's instruction, right? But it came in the past, right? Different times and in different ways, okay? Through the prophets. But in these final days, he has spoken to us by his son, right? Whom he appointed the heir of, of all things, and to whom he created the material universe. So you can keep reading. So the son is the final voice, is the, no, put it away, is the final voice of the father. Yes, the father spoke to, God spoke to the fathers, right, in different ways. I mean, what I mean, when I say the father, I'm referring to God, right? So going back, the son is the final voice, is the final voice of God when he, when, you know, I'm trying to use it that way, right? When it comes to instruction from God, right? The fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, different people, different generation, Moses, David, right? God spoke to it in various ways, 
But in finality, in these final days, he has spoken to us by or someone, someone let's put, put it in his son. So the son is the, and if you read further, he said the son is the radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his nature, right? That's in the verse three down, right? And 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 although so you could keep reading, so the son is the exact representation of his nature. So to understand the father or what God really said to the father or what God is saying to us now, let's start with that, right? You have to understand the nature of the son and not just nature, because the nature of the son is the nature of God. He's the exact representation of God. Okay. And not just, so obviously the son down the road, the son is God himself, right? So I'm trying to, you know, trying to make that point. But so with that, that if God spoke to the fathers in different ways. Now, if we listen to the son, right, in the book of, I believe it's John, right, when he taught him that the scripture points to him. So Jesus said the, the scripture points to him. So to understand the scripture, you have to understand the son, even though there are different ways. So in the scripture, guys, you see that what God said to the fathers, right? Joshua, Abraham, Moses. Now the son is saying that these different ways that they all point to him. That they, So these different ways that the father heard, Jesus says that they are all pointing to him. He's the pointer. He's the message that, the, that God tried to communicate to the fathers. Now one of the things that in the book of um. So once you don't, if you don't establish that, you will go to the different ways that God spoke to the fathers and try to interpret them outside the son. So we cannot interpret different ways. So, oh, because, you know, God told Abraham, bring your first son now, you know, bring your son, right, Isaac, or, or, or different ways, right? Noah, build an ark. And now you want to build your own, you know, ark or something. There were different ways, right? In the different ways that God spoke to the fathers, we saw there was things about, you know, migration. At one point, people migrated from one part to one part of, the, you know, one country to another, right? There were places about offering sacrifices. You know, for example, the one in migration, God is not trying to teach you how to migrate, right? There's one of, there's war and, the, you know, there's, you know, Joe's Joshua and Moses had to fight and to overcome. God is not trying to teach you the strategy of how to you know, fight a physical war. In those activities, the core, there was a message about the sun. In another episode, we're going to start going into these different ways that God spoke to the Father. What were they, right? Given how, I guess, how they point to the sun. Right, how the moving from Egypt to the promised land was about God bringing people out of sin into sonship. We're going to deal with each of those over time, but knowing this establishes that the scripture has the meaning, the entire the purpose of the scripture is to point to Christ. I cannot hear this over, over time. No wonder, in the um, where is that? Second, I think Timothy. Paul wrote to Timothy, he told him, you've known the scriptures that they will make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The, 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 there's a knowledge, the knowledge in the scriptures to make you, bring you to a place of wisdom that is in Christ Jesus. Not the wisdom of business. In the Bible, there are stories of business. You can leverage some of them, but that's not. The Bible is not a book to show you business principles. You know, there's a story about having kids and all of that. It's not to uh, teach you, you know, Abraham and all that. Oh, yeah, you should, you should, you should, you should wait till you're 99 to have a kid and all of that. There are business, you know, principles, different ways. The gospel of the father, migration, I said, right? There are things about giving, all of that. The core message of many of the things there will point us to Christ. Talking about his death, his resurrection, and the realities that we have, the, the, you know, what God will do in Christ. Without this, you will be, many people are pursuing things. So, for example, going back to our topic today, the blessing of Abraham. 
right? People read that stuff and, and somebody tells you, you know, you, you, to pray over your family. You know, it sounds so good. Pray for your kids, the blessing of Abraham. Oh, I release the blessing of Abraham. Oh, God, I possess it. I claim it. But you, you know, it sounds good. It feels good. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let God, let the blessing of Abraham come on my family. I prayed that prayer. I prayed it for years, right? And then you travel to the part of the, it's so funny, you travel to the part of the world where things function and you say, hey, how are people succeeding? So let's let's talk about let's continue that in in Galatians three. If you not go down to start from ten and read down, it's, you know if you get to fourteen, from ten he's talking about righteousness, right? For all who rely on works of the law are on thy curse, for it is written, "Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to do them." Now, it is evident that no one is justified by before God by the law, right? He's talking about to be justified before God. You can't do that by, your, by the law, right? He said, the righteous shall live by faith in 12. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. And in 13, he says something really powerful. You no, know, really. He said, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. The law has all the requirements. And say, so Christ redeemed the, to the person that believed the gospel. Christ redeemed you. Christ has provided redemption for all humanity. All you will need to do is to believe and you will be free from the curse. You know, I see people going around breaking curses. I break the curse. I lose the curse. I tie the curse. You, and they do this over. You could feel the emotional trail. But emotional, emotional trail doesn't solve anything. Right? You can't win the World Cup in soccer or basketball, football by emotions. Right? They, you could feel that. And you have even, you, you know, you don't break. Christ is the deliverer from curses. The Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Why? How? How did he redeem you? He didn't pray to redeem you. He didn't weep. He didn't. No. He said, by becoming a curse for us. You got to know this. God's solution to deliver humanity from curse, especially not even the curse of human beings, the curse of the law. One thing to be Guilty before people. Nothing is to be guilty before the judge of the universe. You can be declared free. You can be declared approved by, by the U.S. Supreme Court. But yet you are, you are guilty before, the, you know, before God. Right? And God says, the curse of the law, which is the standard God, that God, it, you know, man, when you know, God gave human beings, hey, if you want to be righteous, here is this keep the law, and nobody could, and we're all under curse. And now it says that God Himself, through Jesus, has provided deliverance from the curse. The curse of the law is more than being cursed by somebody, by your by your son, by your father, by whoever it is that cursed you. It is it can be stronger or worse than the curse of the law. But God has provided deliverance from that. For if, you, if you believe in Jesus Christ, I have the good news for you. You are not under a curse. You can never come under a curse. I'm going to, you know, why would you say that? Another episode, I'm going to show you how you can never come under a curse. Because your deliverance was Jesus himself. So for you to come under a curse, Jesus had to go under the curse. Jesus had to die again. I'm going to show you that by the scripture another time. That's not where we're going today, right? But we're trying to talk, we're trying to get to the blessing of Abraham. The cursed Christ redeemed. Not is going to. Right? All these people going around breaking curses. It could, guys, you could feel good. Oh, well, after they pray for me and then things begin to work. That's that you that things that are working for you or things that are not working for you does not mean you're under a curse. 
And I'm going to get to that when I finish talking about the business of Abraham, right? Like, you, you know, you're running. How do you think people that run multi million dollar businesses, right? On, you know, millions of business, they have 5,000 employees. They know the economy goes up and down. And, and they have strategy on what to do in different phases. And sometimes people have 10 years plan. Different strategies know what the government is doing, what different countries are doing, you know, macroeconomics, all of that. If at that level, you know the ups and downs and all of that, it's not, it's not blessing or curse. You know, why is that rampant? Majority, if, even in America, the most successful country, you don't hear me say it a lot, the most successful country in the world, right, as of now, known by the only 10% about between 8 or 10% of the population makes over $100,000 or more. Now, you could say, oh, $100,000 is a lot of money. That's not really a lot. For example, you know, Nigerian GDP is about $400 billion plus. Walmart, one company in America, makes over $600 billion in revenue per year. So the gross domestic product of everything, the goods, the value of goods and services created in Nigeria for around, you know, in a year is around 400 to 450, maybe 500 billion at, at max. One company in America, their revenue is more than the entire GDP of Nigeria. One company. So does that mean that for the blessing, the whole blessing of Abraham in Nigeria, that the, the Niger people in Nigeria are living on, it has not even exceeded Walmart in revenue. Walmart does about $600 billion in revenue. The entire blessing of Abraham, if the blessing of Abraham is money, the entire Nigerian GDP, the believers, all of y'all, they'll pray, are you, you're praying, fasting, and giving, and believing all of that. All your gross domestic value of goods and services is less than what Walmart makes in a year. Now, okay, let's keep going. Now, we said that the believer has been redeemed from the curse. You cannot come under any curse anymore. I'm kind of so we're gonna, you know, you cannot because why? The one that delivers from the curse is Jesus, and he did it. You know, we're gonna treat curse in a separate video, guys. I, I'm gonna quickly. I'm gonna leave it and move forward. Go to fourteen. Where I'm trying to get to. It says so that the so that in Christ, in Christ Jesus. The blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Right? What is the reason for the blessing of Abraham? Before that, you see, Jesus took away the curse. He died on the tree. You know, he hung on the tree to take away the curse. To open the room for that blessing. These are figures of speech. You can't see the blessing of Abraham, what it looks like. You can't see curse, what it looks like, right? There's a curse. And there's a blessing of Abraham. And there's this figure, Christ Jesus. Who did something. What did he do? He called, the Bible said he caught it, he hung on a tree. All these figures, right? It says, so that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, or it say to the nations, right? When you so it's not necessarily mean Gentiles get it, the Jewish people don't get it. No, these Gentiles is to come to the world, everybody really. Okay, so that why so what, what does it mean that the blessing of Abraham come to the Gentiles to receive? The promised spirit through faith. So what is the blessing of Abraham? The promised spirit. The, not, not any spirit. The promised spirit. Not the spirit that God promised in the scriptures. Very specific. Right? Not spirits. The promised spirit. Not for his promised spirit to visit you. No. To receive. That who receives, not the special 
those that walk around like they're special, right? So that we might, everyone, everyone that believe might receive the promised spirit. How? Through faith. Faith in what? In the finished work of Christ. So the blessing of Abraham is actually God giving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit received. The Holy Spirit that God gives to the believer is the blessing of Abraham. It's not money. It's not riches. See, it's not, it's not things working out for you. The Holy Spirit is the promise. You can go through that and read the whole Revelations. It's high time we get back to the truth. You know, you that something feels right, looks right, looks holy, looks, you know, pious, doesn't make it right. For example, you don't hear me say this a lot. After Jesus died and resurrected, the Bible said it was written that in the morning. Of that Sunday morning, that morning, the women, Mary Magdalene and different, all that, you know, that, that helped his ministry and stuff. They, they rose up early in the morning to, to go anoint Jesus, right? Good intention. Good intention. Oh, let's, you know, let's go anoint the Lord. They didn't know he was reason or he has reason, but good intention Good act, right? Looks religious, looks committed, right? Looks very, you know, thoughtful, right? Doesn't look selfish. They're not looking out for themselves. You know, they woke up early, deny themselves, you know, sleep or whatever, all it is. And they went to anoint Jesus. And when they got there to the tomb, they saw that the tomb that was closed was now open. They saw like a, a, a man standing there. And the Bible says it was an angel. And he asked them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? So it's not here. Right? Good action. That good action in our eyes is actually looking for the living among the dead. Think about that. Many things that we do today, people are doing today, trying to get God's attention could be as good as looking for the living among the dead. He's not there. He will never be there. You will not find him there. There is no solution there. It looks good. It looks awesome. We can pray the blessing of Abraham over you. You don't pray the blessing of Abraham over somebody. It sounds good. It gets you feeling good swamp. Good spump means nothing, really, in 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 the actual reality of things, right? People have good spump when Michael Jackson plays, and you know your favorite footballer, favorite artist. But you have to lead by knowledge. What is the truth? And that's Jesus. That's key. What is the truth of the scriptures? Not what my pastor said. What not what my bishop said. Not understand what I was taught. Now that you you telling me to abandon what my parents taught me? As long as you it doesn't line up with the scripture, toss it off. Paul said, "They say, you know, shall we? Do, are we men's pleasers?" He says, "If if someone, if Paul said to the point, if we or another person or even an angel." Bring to you a message, the other than what you've heard, meaning other than the, the gospel, right? If someone else, an angel, a bishop, G, general overseer, you know, whatever you call them, whatever they might have or be, if their message is not the message of Christ, you toss it out. Let that person be accursed. The blessing of Abraham is God's gift of the Holy Spirit to humanity. And that, so now you can see, like the story about Abraham, 
And God trying to, you say from Abraham, God said, I will bless the, the whole universe. That was God's plan. Go to the book of Genesis. Genesis 22. Let's go to 18. In your offspring, because you have obeyed my voice, right? In your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Even since Genesis, since the beginning, right? God's plan to Abraham that, hey, I will bless you. I will, in your offspring, shall all the nations of the earth, right, be blessed. So the plan of God has always been to bless the universe, to bless everybody. And that blessing is actually through the offspring of Abraham. And we know that Isaac was a figure. And that seed of Abraham is actually who? Christ Jesus. The whole nations. All the nations of the earth. God's plan has always been for humanity. And God announced that to Abraham. And then remember Hebrew words, right? God spoke to the fathers in different ways. In, in Abraham, Abraham wasn't the only person around. There were thousands, if not, who knows, millions of people in the earth that have different stories. Some have childbirth issues. Some couldn't have babies. Some have, you know, multiple, like, all kinds of stuff, right? Probably some people looking like, but God chose Abraham, called him out to show an example of what he would do in Christ, right? To use that as, as an example and, and through Abraham, God, God announced to him his plan, which is to bless the whole nation, the nations of the earth. And God said, from your offspring. And God announced that. So in Abraham's case, it was about having childbirth and blessing. But there's still the same message. God bringing the Holy Spirit to, to, to humanity that we might receive the promised Holy Spirit. Once you begin to see that, the scripture will begin to open. Open truly. Not what I mean, open. When it points to Christ, the veil is taken away. The veil is taken away. All right, guys. So I hope this help was able to share some light, right? On, on, on this matter, right? You're praying to, to succeed. When people can succeed, to get money. Let's talk. Let's be real, right? Because another person's success is another person's poverty, right? Is another person's poverty. What many people call success today could just be to own a house and buy a car. To another person, they're trying to get a, you know, two houses, one home, one vacation home. Another person is trying to keep a billion dollars a month in revenue. Yeah. Or 10 million or 5 million. So, what we call our wealth process is not what the scripture is talking about. When God, God has given humanity the ability to, to succeed, the brain, God didn't give us, you know, God gave us brain to engage. But say, like, are you saying, Chidi, I, I, I can't pray anymore? No, that's not what I said. Does prayer determine your success? That's not a topic. All right, we'll leave that for today. But God has given you, man, just like procreation. We don't, we don't necessarily have to pray to say, God, I want to have a baby. Please help me. You, you engage the principle of childbirth. It, it, it works. You don't know permission needed. You can be anti-God or don't believe in whatever. And you just do what is necessary for the man and the woman. They have a baby. right? So when we say that, hey. The God is not necessarily involved, even though he's involved, but he has put the system in place, right? So when we say to God is not making the decision of who should have a baby or not, or who should be blessed, who should be financially well off, really, because <laughs> that seems to be the word called blessing today, right? Or not, because he has, is within the affairs of humanity. People put it in place. You cannot build bridges by praying. Right? You can't build skyscrapers with prayer. Yesterday I was in a very nice restaurant, 49th floor. Beautiful. 49th floor. Just amazing. The height, the light, everything. Right? 
to, to, to set up such architecture, you don't have to believe God, obey God, whatever. And God is not going to take it down because you don't believe in him. You, you understand architecture, engineering, you know, all kinds of structural engineering, civil engineering, all the things that, you know, that, that, that it was necessary. Design, you know, all of that to be able to set up such a structure. But the, 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 what I see going on today, I understand it more because majority don't know how to create wealth. So they resort to, and their parents don't know, so they resort to the answer they get, which is what? Pray, believe. And those kind of messages robs us of our effort. It's like, the, you know, we're trying to find the living among the dead, right? Because you're not applying the right strategy, you are not getting result. Make you majority will not get result. Why? Because there's no result there. And then because of that, people are frustrated. And now, what God has given to us, which is really the Holy Spirit, we don't even see Him because we don't even know that that's the blessing. How do you appreciate it? Because you don't know what it is. God gave you something; you don't know what it is. If I give my daughter my little girl, Lamborghini key. She doesn't, she doesn't know what it is. She might even buy it. She might even buy it. She's three, right? But if I give the same key to an adult who, who's a huge fan of Lambo, man, you probably may not sleep, right? You'll be up all night looking at the car, touching it. Why? Because you know what it is. Even though my daughter had the key, no, one year old had the key, has no knowledge of the value, what it is. So now... Right? We're not appreciate. Don't even know what it is. Probably looking for something else. Now that you know, when you begin to know what God, what God, what God meant by what He said, not what people claim He said. The, the blessing is the Holy Spirit. And that's it. That's it. Who said you oh, so if you have the Holy Spirit, you can't prosper? Nobody said that. Again, when we, we have got to define what it means to prosper. Is it $10,000 we're talking about? Or a million dollars? What, 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 which one? And yeah, which one? Again, knowing this truth was just radical. Because, again, 90% of America, the most successful nation, 90% of the people working there do not make up to $100,000 a year. So that means 90% don't know how to create wealth. In the most successful country in the world, how much more on a piece of the earth? And that you do that you did something it seems to be working doesn't make it a, a, a law. What is the truth? The blessing is the Holy Spirit. And that's it. If you want to be a civil engineer, if you want to be whatever, you could be great at it. You could study, you know, the blessing is the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and in another place, as you dig deeper, you will now see wow, the blessing is the Holy Spirit. That is actually the forgiveness of sin. You can see all the different, same thing, but presented in different ways. Because when God, right, I'm going to go another, you know, in a, in a longer session where we can really show that, right, different, the same thing. Because, because God forgave us, he gave us the Holy Spirit. That's not half and half. God never did any half job. I forgive you and there's no Holy Spirit. The, the incoming of the Holy Spirit is because of the forgiveness of sin. And that is also making you righteous. All of that happened. A lot of like righteousness, justification, sanctification. You know, son of God, child of God, you know, member of his family. All of that is describing the same thing that God did, which is the blessing of Abraham. All right, guys, it was a wonderful time bringing to you this message. Share this video, subscribe, and we'll try to do this more often. Adios.